Hi there, I'm John from CNCROI.com and today we're going to make a custom steamboat. Before I started CNCROI.com, I was known as the CNC King. CNC King was a website that I had that sold digital files all around the world to people with CNC lasers and routers and plasma cutters and a little bit with uh, 3D printers. I shut that site down a little bit, bit over a year ago to focus entirely on cncri.com. But it was fun to go back to those days and design my own little toy. In this case here, it was a pedal steamboat. So you can see here that these things actually spin, which is pretty neat. And I have all the little details in there. It's just a nice break from some of the other kind of work. So you even have inside that are stairway, so everything sort of works with this model. So the first process when it comes to designing something like that is actually to make a 3D model of it because going trial and error of, with a model with that many parts and complexity, I don't know how you could do it. it. You'd waste so much time and so much, in this case MDF, but any other material doing it. I prefer to, to, to throw away electrons and I do throw away physical uh, wood. <laughs> If you're wondering how do you go about learning how to do this stuff, I taught myself. And during that process, I actually wrote five books to teach people how to do this kind of modeling. It's pretty straightforward. To me, it's intuitive because I've done over uh, 200 models that I could actually saw on the internet and hundreds more that I haven't uh, shown to other people. So to me, it's a very intuitive design process. It might not be the most intuitive way for you to go about designing something this complex. Uh, the advantage to doing a 3D model of it is that afterwards I do a 3D animation. Now that's very important because the 3D animation is the first time I actually assemble the model and that shows me anything that isn't really possible. For instance, in the virtual world I can have all of these parts occupying the same space. Now in the physical world I can't do that because you know you can't have you know your two hands merge into one hand so to speak. So that's what the 3D, model, the 3D animation does. After that, I have to generate the cut files. The cut files is a very important step because that's when I double check the scale. Whenever I design my models, I, may, I base everything totally on the material thickness. In this case here, it's 1 8 inch MDF or 3 millimeters. And so before cutting the file, I have a couple references that I have in the file itself. And I just change it so that everything will fit perfectly uh, perfect I guess and everything is almost a friction fit after that you just apply a little bit of glue to make sure everything sticks together
to me, this stuff is not very difficult to design or to build. Uh, but for customers looking at it, you know, the first glance, they're like, oh my God, how do I go about getting you at cncri.com to design something like this and make it for either my trade show um, or for a corporate gift or whatever you have in mind. That model can be absolutely anything. So let's say uh, you manufacture airplanes. Well, we can make an airplane model like this here and we can make it for basically any price point. So how do you go about doing that? Well, the first step is to establish a budget. Um, I need to know how much money I have to play with. And that's very important because it tells me right away, one, if you're serious or not. If you say, well, I want this thing here for a hundred bucks. Um, that's not going to happen. I won't even cover materials. So after we establish a budget, we need to figure out how many we're going to do with that budget. Uh, if you're only making one unit, uh, then you're paying basically all the design process for that one unit. But if you're doing 100 units, well then you could spread out the design costs over those 100 units that we produce here in the shop for you. The next step uh, is to find out what materials you want us to use. Now in this case here, I used MDF. And MDF is a really nice material because it could be painted to look like basically anything. If let's say your budget didn't allow us to build this here out of stainless steel, but you wanted a steel look, well we can do that using paint and it won't, it, it, will, it will look pretty close to steel at a distance. Close up, you can't match it, but at a distance, most people go, oh wow, that's a pretty cool steel project. the animation I made a while back, I actually use that as reference when it comes to actually building the physical model. After everything is cut out and the mask is removed, it's time to put it together to form the final completed model. Now the challenge here is, in this case here, there's a lot of parts. One way to get around that for me is to design every part to be as unique as possible. So basically one part will not fit into another part uh, by accident. It still sort of happens by happenstance because the more number of parts you have, the greater the chance of one part fitting into another perfectly and then when you get to the end of the model you find out you got an extra part that should go there and then nothing else really wants to fit properly. And I actually did have that problem here. Although I did design this myself, the, the parts sort of mix in your own head after a while. So over here I have a small little mistake that I did. I actually used one of the side ones here as one of the, the center points to support the whole model. So you can see here it's, it's totally hollow all the way through. So I only realized that after I put uh, the glue and I had everything on the first floor. So to solve that problem all I did was use a chisel cut it out and then I used an extra little piece to sort of cover it. But if I was going into production with this thing I would know to make a small change to that design and so that it's very uh, intuitive as to what part should go where. For instance, this part here that I screwed up, uh, it's the center point here. So all I would really need to do is put like a little hole or just engrave a little bit of detail on it to say this is you know, center, this is left of center, this is right, and, and so forth.
my design philosophy is very different than most people who design this kind of stuff. For me, I want to have the complexity showing, so it looks really complicated, but I don't want it to be very complicated to build because I've built enough of these models to know that it's not fun to have 100 parts that look the same, they're just uh, one millimeter of variance between them, or 1 16th. So what I prefer to do is whenever we have custom modeling projects like this, we make a prototype to show to the customer. So in this case here, let's say we do a production run of 100 of these, and if they're for a trade show, first thing I do is build a 3D model, uh, customer approves it. Do a 3D animation, customer approves it. Then it's time to make a physical model like this, and actually send that to the customer or have a meeting with them. And so they can visually see the model itself because it's very hard to visualize a 3D model in the real world for most people. So let's say you get this on your desk and you say, okay, well, this looks really good at all the angles. That looks about right. Um, I outlined maybe a few design issues that we should mark, probably solve for the production of this model. And then after that, we go into production. So again, it's, it's a nice thing to know the budget, the volume, but it's also important to know the timeline. If you need something like this uh, in the next two days, it's not happening. Uh, there, it, it depends on the complexity of the model. Another thing to keep in mind is that because everything for me is based off the material thickness, it can be done at any scale. So in this case here, it's a 1 8th or 3 mil MDF, but I could easily cut this model out, out of one millimeter, or I guess that would be 1 16th or 1 32nd uh, inch MDF, if there was such a thing. And so the model would be about a third of the size. It also goes the other way. So let's say you wanted this to be made out of two by fours. Um, the model would work as two by fours. It would take a lot of material and it would take a lot of time to build it together. And there might be a need for some steel reinforcements and that kind of stuff, but it's totally possible. Whatever works at, at a certain scale will work at a larger scale because nothing is based off units, everything's based off material thickness. So if you need a custom model, contact me at cncroi.com.